Hey there, Sam. Let's add a new feature to our speed typing game. I would like to have a history of the WPM that I had so far. So here, when I click on the high score button, we'll go to a page where all the WPM high scores are listed, ranked from high to low. Now I've got eight high scores at the moment. Let's play a new game and see if a new score is added to this list. I get 40, that's great. And it also appears in the high score list. The magic behind this is called local storage. Without further ado, let's dive in to the code. So let's start with local storage. Local storage, in a nutshell, is just a place in a browser that allows us to store data. And that data will stay there even if you close your browser window. Let me show you where the high scores are stored. Open up the developer tool and switch to the application tab. On the left hand panel here, you'll see local storage. Click on it and we see an array of all the high scores that I stored previously. One thing to keep in mind here is that the data we store inside the local storage is domain specific. So that means the data saved to this website will remain in this website. You won't be able to access this data in anywhere else. For example, if I open up a new tab and go to the application panel, the local storage there is quite different because we're no longer on the same website. Now let's talk about how we can save data into a local storage. The browser provides us a simple interface to work with local storage. That is through the local storage object. The data inside the local storage is just a series of key and value pairs. We can set new items in the local storage by calling the set item functions on the local storage object. The first argument will be the name of the key, and the second argument would be the value of the key. As you can see, a new entry has been added to the local storage. The key is name and the value is Sam. Now to get an item from the local storage, we can call the getItem function. The getItem function accepts one argument which is the key of the item. So if I pass a name, I get Sam. Now one thing to note here is that the local storage can only accept string values. You can pass anything that you want to the set item function, but it will automatically convert into string by local storage. For example, if I set name to be one, and I try to get name again, I get a string one. While this is okay for numeric value, string value, and boolean value, it's not that okay for array and object. I'll show you what I mean. So if I set name to be an array of numbers and I get name again, I'm not getting an array back. It's even worse with object. So if I set name to be an object, we get this unknown life form, which is very, very bad. So how can we fix this? It turns out that in order to convert an array or object into a proper string, we need to use something called JSON. So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. In short, what that means is to write array or object in string, but with proper formatting. Let's take a look at a few examples. We can convert an array into a JSON by calling the stringify function from the JSON object. Again, the JSON object is just another built-in object that the browser provides. As you can see here, we have converted the array into a string with the proper format. The same applies to objects. Let's try to convert an object, JSON, stringify, and a random object. As you can see, we get a properly formatted object as a string. Combining this with local storage, we can now store arrays and objects without any unexpected behavior. Let's try this out. We're now seeing our data appearing in the local storage. We do have another issue though. Our object has converted into a string and we do need to convert it back to an object. To do that, we can use the JSON pass function. JSON pass is the opposite of stringify. It can convert JSON string back to its original form. As you can see here, we're getting an object back. The word pass means understanding or interpreting something. So with JSON pass, we are just trying to interpret a given string in JSON so we can convert it back into its original form. And that is all we need to know in order to build the high score functionality. So we'll continue from the code from the last lesson. Now the idea is to save the high score right after the user has finished the game. We first need to grab the existing high scores from the local storage. To do that, we just call the getItem function from local storage and the key is high scores. Remember, high scores is an array, so we should convert it back into an array by using JSON pass. Now high scores could be undefined, and if we JSON pass an undefined, we'll get an undefined, which is not an array. We should give it a default value of an empty array 
if it happens to be undefined. There are a few ways to do this. One is using the if else statement, which could be a little bit verbose. The other one, a cleaner way, is to use the or operator. So here we can just read this line as we're going to set a variable called scores and its value will be the result of JSON pass on the high score key in local storage. Given that the value is thrifty, if the value is falsy, like undefined, JavaScript will run the next block after the or operator and set the value of scores to it. In our case here, an empty array. So now we can guarantee that scores will always be an array. So we can call array functions on it. And now we can just push the latest high score to the array. I only want to store the all time top 10 high scores. So we should sort the scores in ascending order and we'll check whether the array length is greater than 10 or not. If it is greater, we need to remove the first element. In other words, the lowest score. We can call the shift function to remove the first element. After that, it's time for us to store the scores inside our local storage. We'll call the set item functions. The key is high scores and the value will be the stringified scores. And now let's create the high score page. And also the button that redirects us to it. There's this default underline on the link. We can remove it by setting the text decoration property to none. Now in the high score page, we need a heading and a list to display the high scores and a button to bring us back to the home page. Now for each high score in the local storage, we need to make them a list item and put them inside the list. First, let's target the list. Then we should get all the high scores from the local storage. Again, the same principle. We'll set it to an empty array if it is undefined in the local storage. Now we want to list the high score from high to low. So we do need to sort them first before looping through each of them. So the easiest way to sort them in descending order is to call the sort function to sort them in ascending order first and reverse the result. Next, let's loop through the scores so we can create a list item for each of them. Let's create a function to create the list item. The function will set an argument, which will be the content of the list item. In the function, we'll just create a list item element and set a text content to the content argument. Then we'll simply return it as the result of the function. Now back in the for loop, to create the list item, we just need to call the helper function that we just created. And the content of the list item will be the score of the current iteration. Once that's done, we just need to add the list item to the high scores list. We've got no data at the moment. That's why the list is not showing in the browser. Let's hack it quickly. Just call local storage, set items, high score, and the value will be a stringified array. Refresh the page and we see our high scores. I don't really like the bullet list and the overall styles. Let's add some CSS. To remove the bullet list, we just target UL and set the padding left to zero. Let's change the font family as well to make it consistent with our home page. I would also like to center the text. Let's create a helper class to do that. I'll call it text center, which will just set the text align property to center. And also a display block helper class. Now I'll just center the heading, the high scores, and also the button. We do need to make the A tag block so it can occupy the full width before we apply the text center property. Now one more thing, let's add a ranking number before the scores. We can make use of the index variable in each loop. We will prefix index plus one and a round bracket in the create list item function. The reason why we want the plus one is because the index starts from zero. Let's play a game to make sure everything's running smoothly. Oh no, we forgot to hide the high score button when we click on the start game button. Let's quickly fix that. First, we need to target the high score button and we need to give the element an ID. Then, back in the event listener, assign the height class to the button. Let's try it one more time. Now the high score button is gone and I'll continue to finish this round. And my latest score is in the high score page. Key takeaway for this lesson, local storage persists data in the browser. So even if we close the browser, the data will still be there the next time when we revisit this web page. We can see the data inside the local storage through the application panel in the Chrome Developer Tool. Local storage is domain specific. In other words, we can't access data from another website. 
JSON is a string version of array and object. Since local storage can only accept string data, we need to convert array and object into a string first by using the JSON stringify function. The JSON pass function is the opposite of JSON stringify. JSON pass allows us to convert a JSON string back to its array or object form. And that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.